Matthew Wade is cooked while test selector Mark Wall says Matt Trenchell's position will be discussed after another Shield failure. The all-important final round of Sheffield Shield matches began on Monday with the host of players looking to send one final message to test selectors ahead of the Ashes. Unfortunately the message has been a poor one for many test hopefuls, including wicketkeeper Matthew Wade and opening batsman Matthew Renshaw and Sean Marsh. Wade, the incumbent test keeper, appears to be gone after an unconvincing innings of five runs from 42 balls for Tasmania before he was bowled by Peter Siddle. Renshaw continued a run of low scores by falling for 16 against a depleted NSW bowling attack. Mark Wall admitted Renshaw's position will be discussed at Wednesday's selection meeting, but said the Queenslander is a good chance to play the first test. I'm saying it would have been nice for him to score a few more runs in this season so far, Wall told News.com. at Triple M's Ashes coverage launch. His record for Australia is very, very good. He's batted in some tough conditions. And he's played well. He played well last summer. He's got a good chance of playing. It's more the 6 and 7 where there is a few more, not question marks, but more options in those two spots. Matthew Wade's Ashes hopes have been left in tatters after he was dismissed for another low score during Tasmania's Sheffield Shield clash with Victoria. The incumbent test wicketkeeper was on 5 when he played a pull shot to a Peter Siddell delivery which he bottom edged onto his stumps just after lunch on day 1 at the MCG. Wade, who has averaged 20 since his test recall last summer, is facing a tough task to retain his spot when the Ashes squad is named on Friday. George Bailey played a lone hand for Tasmania, which lost 6 wickets before reaching triple figures. Test opener Matt Renshaw again fell cheaply early on the opening day of Queensland's top of the table Sheffield Shield clash with a depleted NSW in Brisbane. At lunch on Monday, the Bulls we battling at 472 with Usman Kawaja on 31 not out at Allen Border Field as the Blues rested their test pace trio Mitchell Stark, Pat Cummins, and Josh Hazelwood. Renshaw fell for just 16 missing a chance to alleviate pressure on his test spot before the Australian squad is named on Friday for next week's Ashes opener at the Gabba. The Bulls opener finally ran out of luck and has now made just 69 shield runs at 13.80 this summer. Renshaw was given out caught behind by wicketkeeper Peter Neville off ex-test seamer Trent Copeland, 2-12, in just the 12th over. Renshaw was unhappy with the decision standing his ground before trudging off. His innings lasted 38 balls and included two fours. The tall left-hander failed to capitalize on NSW resting their test speedsters. Renshaw got off the mark with a leading edge for four off Doug Bollinger, 225, on just the third ball of the match. He also played and missed several times and survived a confident Bollinger LBW shout on 11. Test batsman Kawaja looked untroubled in his unbeaten knock. NSW Gloverman Neville, reportedly in line to replace incumbent test keeper Matthew Wade for the Ashes opener, nabbed three catches. Sean Marsh failed to apply any pressure on Matt Renshaw by failing in Western Australia's first dig against South Australia in Perth. Marsh was bowled by Joe Manny for 17 to leave the hosts 132nd and C fellow opener and test hopeful Cameron Bancraft joined by Hilton Cartwright at the crease. Bancraft caught the selector's eye with scores of 76 not out and 86 against 10 SW earlier this month. Cameron's two innings were really good against the test bowling attack, what old news .com .o. That's the sort of performance as far as me being a selector that is really good. That sort of innings definitely puts you high in the order.